we put pressure continuously Hi guys and welcome to Tactical Combat System channel. In today's video I will discuss again the importance of being able to make the transition between empty hands fight and weapon. If in your training all the time you are exercising your drills, you are making your techniques with the knife already out, deployed, it will not help you so much in a real situation. If you are not able to deploy that uh, weapon fast from your holster, or if you don't know to make this transition between empty hands and your blade so guys many times the fights in a real situation will not start directly with weapons you can have multiple aggressors starting to from hand to hand combat and suddenly it's passing to weapons you must be able to identify that moment and be very fast in deploying under stress factors that weapon that you have at you this means that you must have at least a basic knowledge about hand-to-hand -hand combat. Simple and efficient strikes, not complicated stuff, as I say always. Simple strikes, using of elbows, using of punches, using of knees, yeah? And this must be combined with the deployment of the weapon, because as I say in tactical combat system, we use the empty hands only to create the space and distance in such a way that I can deploy my weapon so deployment of the weapon it's use of deadly force so you must understand that when we talk about tactical combat system and about deploying the knife it's regarding exactly of that situation in which you must deploy your weapon because it's the last resort to protect your life your family life or the civilians around you as i say always bad people are carrying weapons and they will use it against you so, if you don't have this in your combat mentality, underlined, bad people are using weapons, they are carrying and using the weapons against you. And you have only the idea that you practice a system, only empty hands system, in this modern type of uh, combat in which there are multiple aggressors, they are having weapons, you will lose. You will lose your life or you will lose the uh, life of your family member or the civilians around you that you will not be able to protect only having the skills with empty hands you need skills in fire weapons skills in blade and like i always say and also i have a lot of materials on my site about tactical combat medicine care so what is the idea that i'm using my knife i eliminate the threat if in until that moment one of my family members or other civilians are stabbed and killed yeah are losing for example they are cut on the femoral i'll give you an example and they are losing the blood in a very short time and i don't have a tourniquet at me i don't have the knowledge to apply a tourniquet and to stop that uh, catastrophical bleeding and save the life some of you they were uh, telling me last time uh, when i make my drills uh, on the tree that it's a little bit painful if they are doing this all the training hitting the tree the idea is the next you must not all the time hit with power the tree yeah many times is the idea of the mechanics the correct movement and the muscle memory and the programming of your brain to know what to do in uh, in in facing a real situation so for that reason I come with a simple idea to see how you can make, for example, a target in which you, with which you can train and hit uh, more powerful. This is a simple dead tree. I was putting on it to glass, to boxing glass, catching very good, and it's extraordinary good to make your drills and exercise with power on it. And guys, regarding the idea that if you are making the drills exactly as I make it, hitting in a hard material like wood, for example, with my uh, MMA gloves, to simulate the resistance of a, a hard object, like for example in reality when you will hit the face of somebody or the, uh, the body of somebody, it's not the same like you are hitting in the air yeah, or in the boxing bag. So it's very important to understand that to enter on this way, the way of a protector, a skilled protector that is able to protect his life, his family and the civilians around him, it's a way of pain, it's a way of hard training, of sweat, 
otherwise it will be only a dance you will go to your gym to your house i don't know where you are training and you will repeat these beautiful movements without having pressure stress factors without making physical effort you know all these things are helping inducing some stress factors in your drills in your training that are trying to create a similar experience for your body that you will have also in a real situation and i give you an example in a real situation like us already you know when i was explaining in other videos the adrenaline will rush in your body so many changes will happen in it from the uh, increasing of the heartbeats increasing of the breathing uh, losing of uh, fine motor skills and other stuff like this so you are trying with different kind of uh, uh, factors that you induce in your training to recreate something that is close to a real situation so guys we have the next scenario we have multiple aggressors this is my main target we are in a pre-fight uh, situation the attack didn't start I have a push dagger that is on my belt and in a deadly force situation i must be able to deploy it fast to make the transition from empty hands to deploy it fast so i can use it to uh, protect my life yeah or others around me very important hence imagine the scenario we make only a, a, a imaginary exercise hands up if i have multiple aggressors even if i have only one I don't let my hands down, I will take directly a punch that is coming, especially when I have more uh, uh, aggressors and they are also in the lateral, imagine that if you are with the hands here, it's already, if it's coming one of the punch, you are not able to block it. So all the time, hands up, I mean like in a non-combative stanza, you must understand that I want to have also the psychological tactics of inducing them the idea that i am already a victim i don't want to fight i am in a non-combative stanza i let also my body a little bit down but not in the idea that the idea of this letting down is creating this psychological tactics that i am the victim but it's also helping me because i have a better position to move and i'm more stable on the ground yeah i'm letting my body more down hands up i have that face of uh, trying to make them understand that I am scared or I don't want to fight because if I have multiple aggressors and from the beginning I am clinching my fist I am making this from my air, uh, air brow automatically the fight is starting in that moment because they will understand that I want to fight also yeah of course also this idea of being a victim it's also making them having more courage so you must expect that this thing is not to be made, I don't know, staying there all the time and making this. This is only the first impact that you have with them, that it's relaxing a little bit the situation in such a way that you can use that moment to apply a hand-to-hand -hand technique that is creating the space and distance to deploy your weapon, your main weapon. As you know, also in the animal world, the strongest one is coming up and the other animal is going down laying down this is applying also here like a tactic nothing more a, a, a first uh, contact with the aggressors in such a way that it's reducing a little bit the idea that now is the moment that I they can punch you or start the fight so I am doing this movement a repeat I you don't stay there it's only the first contact and then I am using a hand-to-hand -hand, uh, technique, uh, technique like punching or using my elbows or I don't know what you want. In such a way, let's say I have one strike, two strikes, one jab, one cross. This is enough, even if it's not reaching and I was not able to give it full um, uh, power and exactly to reach my target, to aim the target exactly where I need it. This it's enough that this guy is blocked in that second yeah he has this blockage or to cover or to do something and it's permitting me to create the space and the distance to deploy my weapon this is the idea when i am involved in this kind of situation okay it's only a scenario yeah 
imagine that uh, all these things for example if i'm deploying the weapon i consider that it's a very bad situation in which for example the other aggressor has a bad baseball bat the other uh, is staying with his hands in his pockets and i'm knowing that this is a uh, signal that this guy can have a weapon uh, a blade in his uh, in his pocket and i decide that is the moment to operate my blade to take out my blade i make it the instinct is very important being aware identify under stress different kind of uh, uh, signals that uh, they tell you this is the moment in which you must deploy your uh, weapon don't don't uh, mix it with the fear because many times when you are having fear because of that fear you, you cannot control your emotions and you will take immediately the blade out because you are scared yeah so you must also have this uh, ability that you can uh, reach by meditation and other exercises visualization techniques that you can be able to control yourself in that situation so you can identify these signs that i am saying to you so i am in a non-combative stanza i don't want to fight when i find the best position then i shoot my first uh, punches it can be only one it can be only one in the face i only strike him fast if it's if i am more fast to do this than to give a punch i don't know if i'm more close and i want to do only this i'm doing only this because the main role is not that i will be able to fight these guys only with the punches three guys that maybe has also have also um, uh, weapons to fight them with bare hands this like I, I repeat all the time it's only that i need to create the distance and the time to deploy my weapon because if i am here and i want directly to deploy my weapon in this moment i am remaining uncovered so all the punches baseball bat i don't know other things are coming on me now because i am uncovered and i am very close like distance this is the reason why i am punching and after i am punch boom is the moment in which oh, i am creating space so that this is the time that i can deploy now my weapon and apply other kind of tactics of course if i can evade i will evade if you have other people to protect near you or you cannot evade you must apply other kind of tactics this is a simple drill that i was showing you many times also in the past but now because i explained to you also you will make a better idea about it yeah so very important multiple aggressors non-fighting stanza not clinching your fists not being from the first moment like this because the attack will start they will be on you and it will be very hard that you can deploy your weapon yeah so the idea is to apply this kind of tactics of, okay these tactics are going only in the situation in which the attack was not starting it's a pre-fight situation if for example i am uh, in the bus sitting and suddenly the door is open and somebody is going in with a knife and begin to stab these tactics are cannot be applied yeah i must deploy my uh, weapon as fast as i can and eliminate the target yeah so it's different situation this is applying only in this kind of um, situation in which it's a pre-fight you know that it will start you know that you are outnumbered you know that uh, the fight will start but it's this time in which you can use your strategy so you can deploy your weapon imagine that i have a push dagger yeah this is very fast to be deployed but think now if you have a folding knife and you want to take it out long distance to reach it complicated moves moves that are requiring fine motor skills you will be under the effect of adrenaline so these fine motor skills again they will not work at the same level so it will be more and more complicated so these kind of things you must understand and you must have a strategy all the time before something to happen yeah of course all the uh, scenarios that you will make never will be the same in reality but you program as i say all the time the brain to have a response yeah and the most important is to program your brain with exercises to be able to identify potential threats for this i give you 
a simple exercise that it will help you a lot next time when you go to the town yeah that you go to work you go to market doesn't matter the next day for example from the morning until the uh, night when you go in the town try all the time to be aware to look at the people to identify what type of uh, uh, guy what type of person it's making your brain to think that can represent more danger than another and i give you an example if i'm walking and i'm seeing a grandma that is walking uh, slowly uh, carrying her bags from the market and i am walking and i am seeing a guy that has a hood in his head tattoos is going with the hands in the pocket of course you understand from the beginning who can represent a higher threat than another yeah so these kind of things go on the street try to identify try to hear try to hear your instinct try to uh, uh, see these signs that are rep can represent potential threats yeah other exercise when you go try when you pass people to use peripheric view peripheric view means that i am not looking directly means that even if i'm looking straight my eyes are permitting also to see in the lateral yeah so when somebody is passing try to not look directly but to identify if that person has his hand in his pocket if that person makes different kind of movements is putting a hand in his pocket try to identify colors what kind of uh, bag he has red blue without looking directly this is helping a lot your uh, brain to be able to identify dif different uh, kind of signs if you will be in a real situation because if i have multiple aggressors and two of them are in my laterally but but this is the most aggressive of them and i must be very uh, how to say uh, uh, precautious about uh, the movements that is making and i cannot look in the same time at all if i'm training my side if my i am training uh, my eyes I will be able to see peripheric view that this guy from here I give a uh, scenario yeah, uh, is putting now the hand in his pocket so hand in the pocket when you are in a fight it's putting you question mark uh, uh, it's making you man this guy for sure it's putting the hand there because wants to deploy something yeah it's existing the great uh, probability that he will take a weapon from there here is not existing a magic formula a magic combination you must hit only these strikes or only this you can do whatever combination you want only to understand that if i am in a multiple uh, fight with, with multiple aggressors and i put too much pressure on only one person of them yeah I, I focus myself, I have this tunnel vision, I start my, like many times it's happening, I'm starting my fight and I'm only punching and fighting with this guy, the other two will knock me up, will come from beside, it will, they will put me down, a lot of things, they can take a weapon, they can stab me, because I was putting in my mind, I was having this tunnel vision and I was focusing only on one target. So when you do this, you must have in your mind again that you don't stay there to fight with bare hands. Yeah, I'm making, I'm using this because I need fast to deploy my weapon. Nothing more. I'm here striking, deploying the weapon and now I can use it. Again, why I don't advance, why I don't enter, and when I catch these punches to enter and continue and give the elbows and other kind of strikes, enter again. Because of what I said, because there are multiple aggressors, and the idea is to create a space and time only that I am able to deploy the weapon. If it was only one guy and I was entering, of course. I don't stop, I'm giving the punches, I'm hitting and give all kind of strikes until he's going down, stepping on his head and 
eliminate it, eliminating the threat if it's needed. Also, not all the time you have the right space and distance so you can give this kind of punches. Yeah, the aggressor can be can come very close to you, uh, putting your head near yours, uh, clinching his fist, and being ready uh, to strike you immediately. Yeah, so. There are moments in which you can use other parts of your body as I show you many times for example like the elbow swing my target is very close of course from here I cannot maybe I don't have the time maybe I don't have the space maybe maybe I am here it's for example an, uh, a wall very near at me exactly where I am and I cannot do this kind of movement so I will use for example from here an elbow I am here and striking. So, if I have a wall in my back, of course I don't have where to go back to create a space to deploy my knife. And in that moment, I must find a place between these guys to escape, to go between them after I'm striking, to go between them and deploy my weapon in that moment. So as a drill, have your target, I'm in front, I'm staying, staying in front of the target, non-combative stanza, I'm here having, you can exercise also how I say to you, this kind of movement to have all, all the time in your mind is using visualization techniques. Many times I'm saying to you that they are very important. Many athletes, that they are making performance, are using visualization techniques and they are helping a lot. So, I am here, I am making this kind of victim stanza to, for a, a fraction of second with non-combative um, hands, yeah. And from here, I have an elbow, I'm coming with an elbow. In this moment, when I'm coming with the elbow, this hand is protecting up yeah i can protect but immediately after this i'm trying to create space to go back creating space the weak hand is going on the shirt cover my chin with the shoulder the other strong hand is coming on the belt i'm deploying the knife and i'm ready to use it so here Very important thing, if you are not coming from a, a combat uh, fighting uh, background, yeah, you didn't make these combat sports, I don't know, Muay Thai, kickboxing, MMA, and you don't have this ability of having very good explosion and to hit with the elbow, it's very important to understand that this is not coming tomorrow. Yeah, If you are not exercising, if you are not training, if you are not learn the movement to have this explosion it will not be the same in a real situation yeah it's not like you make it one time and then i don't know you don't exercise it anymore and in one month in two months you want to be able to give you know, this kind of strikes because there are a lot of mistakes that people are doing and especially people that they are not trained to use this kind of uh, uh, strikes for example one is charging loading the strike yeah so this loading if i'm in a fight and i'm making this movement it's exactly when i say to you when i was showing you with the knife and i want to strike with the knife and first i bring here and then i strike this is that time and of course i will have more power in the blade concept we don't need power blade is blade is cutting and entering very easy in a human body but when we talk about the strike, for example, with the elbow, if I'm making this, yeah, I will have more power when I strike. But my idea to use this elbow is not with that elbow that I will eliminate the target because I have multiple aggressors. So this is that time I'm coming here, but I have three targets 
that can hit in this moment because this is dead time. Even if I am very fast, I will cannot be more faster than if I am hitting from this position. So we are near the target and from here where my hands are, I'm with the hands up. From here, from this position, my elbow is starting. This is going up, covering this in the idea that maybe I have a lateral um, other aggressor yeah, that can come with a punch in this moment. This is covering, it can be a normal cover or the cover like I said to you, covering my back of the of the neck and coming with the elbow here yeah so I'm having this movement from here Boom. strike explosion pushing my leg in the ground rotate rotating pivotating the shoulder entering with the elbow and of course you must understand that after you strike you don't remain there fixed target is the target so I have the strike I'm here strike move creating the space so I can deploy my weapon also you must understand that if you are too far from the target and you want also to hit you will not reach it because your target will not be like this it will have a reaction of course again I repeat reaction is slower than action so if you are starting the strike already you are in front of uh, of the target the main idea is to understand that this is a drill, this is a target that is not moving, your target will move. So when you are making your strikes, you must have this in mind. So you can repeat, for example, have uh, a visualization like my target is more close than this, yeah, I visualize it here. But when I will want to strike, the target also will have a movement, so even if I'm Starting from here, I'm making one step in front and then from here I'm coming with the elbow. Why? Because of this. Because I understand that my target also will have a reaction. So, being here, here I'm striking because it's a target that is remaining on the place, but in reality it will move. Yeah. So this is the reason why I exercise after I learn the drill like yeah, this is the first drill, I'm repeating this, hitting from here, I'm staying, hit, deploy the knife. After that, I'm making one step and I'm making with movement, yeah? And the same, going back, deploy, deploy the weapon. So another thing that you can do is catching. Imagine that this is my target, I catch with the hand from behind of the neck and here I'm coming with the elbow, yeah? So catching, I am with the hand here and come, boom. I'm here, catch, come, boom. Creating space, deploying the weapon. So again, catch, strike, creating space, weapon. Faster. Very important when we talk about this technique with catching to understand that when I have the position of no combat, this hand I try to put it more close from my target in such a way that I can make very fast this kind of catching. So when it's catching, this is catching and already the hand is going with the elbow hitting. After I catch, I'm hitting. If I have multiple aggressors, I don't remain with the hand there because it's the same thing. My face is remain uncovered and other parts if they are taking out a knife or something. So it's here I'm catching fast and then I'm coming with the elbow. In the time of the elbow, I'm already moving this hand to protect. I'm hitting. Then I'm going creating distance, deploying my weapon. So here, it's existing also another type in which I am with the hand close, very close with the hand that I'm striking. So it will not be so powerful, but again, it will be fast and reach the target. I am here with the hands up and all going straight. Here, straight. Here. 
Here. So to combine it together, you can make also with a coordination drill in such a way that I have one strike going on my shirt, deploying my knife, striking or having contact with my target, being with a knife, slash, slash, contact, step. Again, it's a coordination drill, nothing more, yeah? I'm not staying, I repeat, again, I'm not staying there to make I don't know how many strikes. No, I'm taking the knife out, I'm stabbing, and that's all. I am moving. So guys, after you learn a little bit the techniques, how to uh, strike good, how to make the, this kind of drill, you now start to implement in your training a little bit of stress factors. And today we use uh, the physical effort, yeah, making physical exercises, running 50 meters, coming back, making 20 push-ups, and then making fast your drill. It's uh, uh, approaching a little bit the same uh, uh, situation, how your body will respond uh, in uh, the reality. Yeah? Uh, under the adrenaline, your heartbeats will increase, your breathing will increase, so this will help you achieve that. Yeah? A simple exercise, if you have kettlebells, I have kettlebells, you can make different kind of exercises. For example, for the upper body. I let the weights, I'm coming to the target 10, 20 series or 10. And you con can continue like this, repeat and again the drill. As a deadly technique, I have the same thing. I'm in a non-combative stanza. I'm starting with a jab, cross, I go, extract my weapon and coming from down to up. This is imitating like the thoracic box. It's coming the knife inside the thoracic box going up. Yeah, and when you have a good blade, it's entering inside the heart, yeah? So here, entering up. Here, 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 here. Of course, the same technique, complete with creating space, yeah? One, two, here. One, two, three, creating distance. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget if you like the content that I'm creating and sharing with you, subscribe to my channel and if you have other ideas about other topics that you want me to make videos about it, let it in the section below. Until next time, take care.